Hello, and thank you for joining me on a brand new episode of Women Series, where we capture developments and stories that impact women. Thank you to everyone that sent in their feedbacks on the last episode. I mean, it's amazing to note that women are realizing that they are worth more than whatever the society have labeled them to be. And when they put their minds to achieving anything, excuses have nothing on them. By the way, if you haven't watched, please do that and learn how to crush your excuses. Um, today, we're talking about a societal issue that has affected some people and indirectly affecting everyone. Now, it is a menace and it needs to be addressed. A lot of people have spoken about it in the last few weeks and I've heard how women, especially mothers, play part in what I've referred to as menace. So we want to talk about it today and I've titled today's topic as Moral Decadence in the Society, Whose Fault? The Family or the Society at Large? It's a virtual interview today and my guest is joining in from Calibre, a friend of the house. But before I introduce her, let's go on a quick break and I'll be back. Tune in to Web TV Daily to stay up to date and informed on the financial market, personal finance, and more. We have got you covered with all your favorite TV shows, economy and politics, market review, women's series, millennial talk, Islamic Finance Weekly, The Brief, exclusive interviews, events, and we keep you up to date on all the updates in the financial market with the market opening gone. Watch premium content. Watch web TV. Same news, different respect. Welcome back. This is the Women's Series where we capture developments and stories that impact women. And today we're talking about moral decadence. I have my guest who is joining in virtually, Ophonime Basi, author and a family coach, a family life coach, pardon me. Hello, Ophonime. Good. Hello. How are you doing? Good everything. How are you doing? It's nice having you on the program. How is I'm excellent. It? Thank you. And you, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. Right. Um, so let's quickly go right. to what we have to talk about today. Um, I suppose you're aware of the recent happenings in our society. I mean, the facts of experience have shown that unvalued life and moral decadence in our society has reached an unbearable level. Let's talk about all of this moral decadence. I mean, malpractice, cultism, sexual abuse, fraud, most especially, that has allegedly been carried out through diabolic means. I mean, it has gotten to that point. Now, if we have, or if we have to blame someone or some persons, who do you think we should blame? Is it the family or the society at large? I mean, to set the record straight for this interview. All right, thank you, Yomide. Actually, everyone is to blame. Everyone is to blame because when you look at the family, and you also look at the society, the family is a part of the society. I have said it before on this show that the family is the most important nation on earth yep. and also the production factor of the society. So when you talk about the family and you're talking about the society, the society is only a projection of what goes on in our family. So as a matter of fact, everyone is to blame. You can't just, you can't absorb the family, neither can you now absorb the society. It's all, it's all encompassing. But I'd just like to say that um, the recent trend of the ritual killing and all, you want to find out at the root what's, what's pushing them, what's making the young people or whoever you know, it is that yeah, is involved in this. We want to find out what is actually pushing them. And you find out that is one thing, the quest for wealth, the quest for affluence, the quest to be recognized, the quest, you know, to make it big without having to go through the hassles in life, in quotes. It could even be that some of them had gone through a lot. They have worked, they have um, served, and it looked as if the money that comes into them comes in trickles. It's not enough to handle whatever challenges, disease that they have. So you realize that these young people are now going now to seek for instant wealth, a quicker way or to cut corners just to make this a reality. We cannot actually rule out the fact that life is seemingly hard, 
for and some yes, people. I was, going to, I was going to add that, that do you think that it is based on the state of the prevailing socioeconomic conditions in the, currently going on in the country? I mean, we understand that it is not easy with anybody. The financials are really, really low for quite a number of people. It's very, it's very, very difficult. I mean, let's just put it out there. Do you think that those are just the reasons or do you think that reason is even enough for them to go that route? Well, there are lots of reasons, but that, that is a major reason. That's a major reason. Now, going that route now, it now depends on your values as a person or the family values that you grew up, you know, to see. How does your family define wealth? How, how, what, is the, what is the teaching around wealth or getting riches? I remember growing up in my own situation, in my family, you dare not bring anything to the house that my parents did not buy for you. You know, they always question, where did this come from? Someone gives you something in church. You have to come show your parents, oh, this is this. Someone gave me this gift. Oh, this is this. And they're like, okay, next time, don't, don't get it. When they want to give you some, tell them to give it to me as a parent. And so we have a way of actually telling that to whoever gave us gifts. So, but you realize that right now in the society, right now, sometimes these young people come home and then give gifts their parents with expensive gifts, exp give them cars or things that they know that their children really cannot afford it. Exactly. Yeah. And they're not asking questions. Sometimes maybe it's, just, I don't know why they do that. Maybe they just feel, okay, maybe my daughter or my son has, has you know, is big enough. They can now fend for themselves. Sometimes it's even the parents that even go as far as saying, when I was your age, I used to do this, I used to do that. So for me, behind all of that, what, what values are pushed in our homes about wealth, about creating wealth, creating wealth, that is what will now make someone feel, okay, um, in my home, if you bring money that is, you cannot account for, you, you cannot fly in my house. And so you would know that ah, even if someone tells you, come to, follow me to a place and you get wealth instantly, the person would have a rethink and say, ah, if I get wealth instantly, what would I tell my parents? What would I say I got this money from? Yes. So to further just um, buttress what I said, we now look at the, you talked about examination malpractices, you talk about um, sexual abuse, you talk about all of that that is going on. And you want to find out where are these um, where are these people coming from? For those that actually practice examination malpractice, you want to ask, are they not from homes? And if you want to check clearly, you realize that probably they had cut corners at home, they had them um, stolen at home, they had looked for a way to rig, you know, to rig certain situations at home and they got away with it. So they feel, okay, hey, I did it at home. I've done it with, with people in my family. So I can also implement this in the workplace. They're the ones that will go ahead share questions or leak the question and then go ahead to make money from it. What do they want to do with it? They're not satisfied with what they have. So they feel, okay, these are side hustles. These are other ways to go about it. And sometimes they just say, well, it doesn't matter how um, we get these results. The bottom line is that do I get admission? Um, what, what, will people record? What, what will people say about me? So you realize that because of also how our society is, which I'm sorry to say, we are not really particular about the process sometimes of getting the wealth. So people tend to concentrate more on the result. Yeah. So if someone just wakes up today from a one room and has, you know, gets a duplex in a choice area in the country, we all start celebrating, we start singing the grass to gray story. But we do something, there are missing links there. How does the person move from the grass to the grace? So it also happens in our home. We don't, oh, this girl. Oh, just walking around in the neighborhood, suddenly a rich young man came. All of a sudden, she's now riding in cars. Nobody wants to find out where is the missing link. How did you move from here to here? So that's the kind of society we are in. We celebrate wealth. We don't really want to find out the process. And so young people feel that if provided they can make money, hide their face like the song that says, "If you if you don't have money, hide your face." So they want to show their faces, and they will do anything to actually get wealthy. That's just what is going on in our society. You've highlighted the fact that. Um... Maybe not essentially the family, but the family is the starting point. Now, with regards to family, my concerns are majorly with the mothers, women, basically. And um, we've referred to them as um, primary caregivers. And when a child misbehaves or isn't performing as expected, in the, the society then tends to label the mother as a failed parent. Now, do you think that that is a fair judgment on mothers? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. I strongly disagree with that because the mother did not bring the child alone to the world. It takes two, two of them, the male and the female, the mother and the father, as the case may be, to bring a child to this world. And it is a responsibility of both parents. 
except where the other parent is on a bit, um, not, not available due to circumstances, but even your physical presence is not all that there is to, family, to, to parenting or to proper upbringing of the child. You could be at a, you could stay far away, but your influence is still felt in your family. So why do people tend, I think maybe because of how our, our family, how, how the society started, where in, some years ago, women stayed back at home to nurture children. That was okay. There was, things were working well, but now you realize that women are actually going out, trying to make a living and also help their partners, which is the father. So the women are, yes, I suppose they are nurturing the children. Them, but it's not their sole responsibility. The man has his part to play. The fathers have their role to play. They have their part to model to the children, just like the mother. So blaming the mother, it's, um, it's counterproductive. And I think it's, um, it's something that we have to desist from. It's not yes. just the mother that should take the blame. I totally agree with that. But on the other hand, you would agree with me that some mothers have been said to have, I mean, they've been indulging their children um, in this act, especially when it comes to um bringing in money making money making ends meet i mean you admitted to that the other time that they're not concerned about the process of them making money they're only concerned about the results now is it possible that these women are not aware of the consequences of their actions and so even start with what are the consequences of their actions hmm, there are several consequences so for, number one you they go ahead and get this riches or get this wealth and you but probably it's a female child. You sub, you don't, you're not aware of what your female children are doing to get this well. So there is a there's a fear of getting um, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. There's a fear also of abuse, physical, emotional abuse, because sometimes I mean, no right thinking human being would just go subject themselves to sleeping with people just to make money, no matter how you want to look at it. So you don't, apart from the fact that. It, they could have STDs. What about their psychologically or emotionally? What goes on in the minds of their children? So though that's one of it is the STDs. And the other one is that sometimes the mothers, um, probably they, they have also had their own share of what's it called, of abuse, of uh, maybe there are certain words that are passed on to that, that they have, maybe their spouses passed to them that makes it, make, makes it look as if they're incompetent or they're not financially capable of taking care of their home. So in, the, in their minds, they don't want their daughters to be like them. So they feel all their sons to be, all their children to be like them. So they just feel, okay, I don't want what happened to me has to happen to my children. So whatever it is they can do to make money, they should just go ahead and do it to make money. So they are, they, they could, the law can catch up with them. So sometimes they forget about that. Or some even feel that those that the law catch up with, they are not lucky. They are not smart, you know? So I've had some, I've had my boss mention something that, even some prostitutes come, you know, would come to him then and say, please pray for us, for us to get clients. Pray for us, bless us, pray with us that when we get out, they would have clients. So there are some mothers that would actually know what their children are doing. And will still go ahead and say, it will, even when, when policemen are catching others, it will not be your portion. God will cover you or things like that. So they live in denial. They feel that, okay, their children will, can, will be smart, they'll be able to beat the system and all. Now, what I also want to say that it's not even a, it's not it's not just about the mothers. The fathers that are in the house, they have seen what their children are doing. Even if they are, the, the the mothers may be abetting or maybe um, tolerating that, what about the fathers? Can they call the children to action? You know, call the children or call the mother? Oh, I've seen what's going on. Can you explain to me what is this? What is happening here? What is happening there? So you don't leave it entirely to mothers. Fathers also have a part to play. I mean, I love that part that um, it's, it takes two to tango. I mean, the father also has to be available in the family, in the home, to also help to train the children. Now, I mean, you touched on one thing that leads me to my next question, and that's um, on the part of young ladies that um, have been targeted a lot of times when it comes to all these immoral acts. And a lot, of times that, um, a lot of times they seem to entice these young people with material things. Are, they, are there ways we can stop this? I mean, we've established all of these things, it is happening. Now, are there ways we can stop this from happening even further? Is it possible? And I mean, as a society, everybody from the home, even from the children and everybody, is there a way we can stop this from happening even further? Yes, there are several ways. One of the ways we can stop that is education from the home. Okay, no, let me let me not even start there. One of the, the foremost thing is before you give birth to children, 
be sure that you're ready to take responsibility for them. So I just want to say that because I know people that just go ahead and make babies and think that when the babies are here, they will do a launching in quotes. They'll go around um, asking people, oh, baby's here, bless baby, whatever it is you can do with baby, you know, just give gifts to baby. They never, they feel that, oh, some even think that having more children is an avenue for them to raise funds for themselves. So I want to say here categorically, please, before you go ahead, like Zantan is in the corner, before you go ahead and pop that big question and go ahead to get married and that, you know, getting intimate, think about it. Are you ready based on your financial capability at the moment to have and not take care, take responsibility for another person or another child? So when you get that settled, you have to you have to consider the money for you to get diapers, to, to you know, to feed yourself, buy clothes, send the child to school. Consider all of that first. So that when a child comes, you have basic needs or the basic needs of that child met. The, the child will not come into a, a family where the where an experience scarcity. So first point, raise children, sorry, give birth to children only when you can raise them. Mm. Two, when the kids are here, when the children are here, start from an early stage to instill these values into them. Values of contentment, values of delayed gratification that look, things may not come here, come, things may not fall on your laps immediately, it and it will eventually come. Talk to them about dignity in labor or dignity of labor as the case may be like, hey, you have to work hard and a living legitimately. Then also teach them that contentment is important. Contentment is key. Don't, don't, don't um, just get carried away by what other people have. Teach them contentment. Also teach them that there are various ways to, for, you know, there are various aspects of wealth. You're not just financial wealth. There are other aspects, apart from financial wealth, you have the wealth of knowledge from your, you know, from the world of knowledge that you have. In fact, your knowledge or your innovations or your ideas can even is a way for you to make wealth. So teach your children early to be problem solvers, mm -hmm. creative problem solvers. The bigger the problem they solve, the bigger or the wealthier they become. Start that from your home. Let them know that. And then also let them or also shield them from certain things, from certain um, programs on TV. Because most of these things that we are seeing today, they are projected to us via media where oh, you watch a movie where a young man was struggling in the village or was struggling in town and could not get um, riches. But the moment he saw maybe the friend that did well came in from town and asked, how are you doing it? And the person will now say, are you sure you have the heart to do? Can you do anything? And the person says, yes. And they now go ahead to, for, to ritual killing. So let us, what are we projecting on, in our media for our children to watch? Those are some of the things that are sublimely registered in the subconscious of our children. Let's scrap some of, let's scrap those kind of movies. Let's scrap things like that. And they would not even think of it. They won't even see it. They won't even start thinking in their head that, hey, look, there's something like ritual killing. So these are certain things that we can do. And then finally, let's also, um, like I said before, let's mind what our children hear. When they get to gatherings and somebody comes out and say, hey, I just want to thank God. I was just sitting one day and the money just landed in my account and then I'm, I'm very suddenly wealthy. Such testimonies or such things also push our children to thinking that fraud is okay. I mean, money drops in your account. Have you gone ahead to find out from the bank, please, where did this money get, come from? You just thank God and then you use the money. So these are certain things we should teach right from the home. Thank you very much for such an interesting conversation. I mean, I think that um, mothers are hearing and um, everyone has to pick out whatever it is that works for them so that we can, in general, build a, a society that, that works for everybody and less of crimes. Thank you very much, Ofodime. It was great speaking with you. And on a final note, mothers, remember that it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken adults. Again, thank you very much, Ofodime for coming on the Thank program you. once again. As always, it is great speaking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yemi. You're welcome. So on that note, thank you to everyone for watching today's episode of the Women's Series program. Mothers, go and see no more. Now, I'm not calling on the mothers alone. Fathers, go and see no more. Children, go and see no more. Youth, go and see no more. As a society, let's go and see no more. Do not forget to con connect with us via social media handles shown on the screen. You can also watch more of our videos and read our news stories by visiting www.prosheng.com for slash web TV. Thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next episode. Do have a great day. <laughs>